I will just jump in. I will just jump in here real quick. Uh, my name is Ali W and I'm from Yarnspirations. I will be helping moderate tonight's class. So if you have any questions throughout the instructions, um, please just drop them in the chat and we'll get to as many as we can tonight. Uh, so we have a great pattern here tonight for a great last minute Mother's Day gift. Um, perfect for the book lover, really. And um, we're ready, to, I think we're ready to get started. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamara from Moogly, and I'm really excited to be working on this project with you today. This is the crochet bookmark for mom. You can see right here, this is the pattern PDF you should have gotten when you signed up for the class. And if not, I'm sure they'll be dropping that into the chat. You definitely want to have this pattern um, printed out to make this project basically um, it is a fillet crochet project so it doesn't have the instructions written out in the normal format you're going to need to refer to some fillet crochet charts that you see right here they're a little different than your standard crochet charts even so we're definitely going to be go going over that today but first i wanted to share some tips for working with thread this pattern is made in crochet thread uh, size 10 specifically. Um, and those numbers when it comes to thread do matter, just like we when we think of like a four is a worsted or a medium weight and a seven is the great big jumbo stuff. The numbers on crochet thread also matter. So for this one, we're using a 10. And that is sort of of the threads, I'd say sort of the medium weight of thread. It's not the thickest, it's not the thinnest. Um, but working with thread can ha present its own challenges. Um, however, for something like a bookmark, you know, you can't be thread. It's going to be nice and thin and it's not going to put a big lump in their book. So let's go ahead and go over to the overhead camera here. I'll show you the thread that we're working with today. This is Aunt Lydia's crochet thread. I've got it in super close up because it is so small, but this is the classic 10 thread. And as I said, the numbers matter. This is the 10 right there. With thread, it's actually the opposite from yarn. When you have a yarn that has like that little symbol on the side there, you see this one says zero because it's a lace or basically a thread weight. With thread, the smaller the number, the thicker the thread. So if you buy the crochet thread, I believe it says fashion three, or sometimes it's labeled differently, but it has a three on it, that will be thicker than the 10. If you get the 30, that is the really skinny stuff. So depending on if you'd like to adjust the slice size slightly, you can pick a thinner or thicker thread as well. You can also see, let me move this one out of the way, just how thin this thread is. Now to demonstrate the actual stitches and pattern, Today, I'm mostly going to be using a thicker yarn so that you can actually see what I'm doing because you can see just on this scale how teeny tiny these stitches are. So I'm going to take a few stitches here while I continue to talk about some tips for working with thread. Let me get my um, yarn straightened out. But one of the things you can see right away, do you see how it wants to curl up a little bit right there? This happens quite a bit more with thread. It's just sort of the nature of the beast. Um, you may have worked with yarn before you've been crocheting along on a project and you find the yarn sort of twisting up on you as it comes off the cone or skein it tends to happen just a little bit more often with thread. So if you need to, you can kind of just let it untwist a little bit, let it hang up a little bit to untwist your thread every once in a while. Now for this pattern, it calls for a crochet size thread 10. So this would be a 1.4 millimeter crochet hook. I hold it right there you can see just how teeny tiny the actual hook portion is so when you're working with thread it's important to go ahead and really take your time um as much as i would love to demonstrate this in thread today i think that it would be both difficult to see and it would take a really long time but you do want to go ahead and take your time when you're working with thread especially if you haven't done it before it's just a little bit more difficult to maintain tension and of course, to see your stitches, the older you are, at least for me, the more difficult it seems to get. But really, this pattern is mostly double crochets. So if you do want to try working with thread, this is a great one to start with because you're not making anything too fancy that you have to, you know, really try and figure out cabling or anything like that. But as you can see, I really do need to take my time. And one of the reasons for that is, of course, the smallness of it but it's also a little bit more difficult to maintain your tension. So you really need to be careful, especially as you make your initial chain for your foundation row, to make sure that those little chains 
don't get really tight. When we're working with thread like this, it's really tempting and sometimes important to keep a little bit more tension on the thread and to keep a really good grip on your project a little bit more than you normally would maybe with yarn. With yarn, I tend to kind of keep it loose and let it just sort of flow over my hand. But with this tiny little thread, you really do have to sort of just give it a little bit more of a grip. So when you're doing that, especially when you're making that initial chain, it can be really easy to end up accidentally pulling those chains really, really small. So you need to watch your tension, give it a chance to untwist as needed. And then as you can see, another thing, we've talked about how small it is, you're going to want to have really good lighting. I have really bright lighting here at my work desk that lets me see, but you'll want to make sure to have lighting, take eye breaks. If you start feeling eye strain, go ahead and put it down for a few minutes. And also with a teeny tiny hook like this, you may need to take some hand breaks. So just as a little note for your personal health, you know, like I say, take your time, don't rush through these thread projects. The other thing is that when you start, and we're gonna come right back down here to where my first end is on this little guy. I don't know if you can see it on here because it is so small, but I started this project without a slip knot. And I'm going to show you how to do that on a little bit bigger yarn so you can actually see what I'm doing. But with thread, I find it's really, really helpful to start without a slip knot because even though this thread is teeny tiny, once we put a knot in it, it's going to be a lot more noticeable just because the thread is so small and these stitches are so small. So just to make it as seamless as possible, we want to start without a slip knot. So when we go to the actually demonstrate the stitches, I will absolutely be showing you how to do that. But as I say, you just need to take your time with the thread and go stitch by stitch and really get it under some good lighting. And even if you've got one of those magnifying lamps, that can be really helpful as well. Um, but definitely, if it is your first time using thread, make sure you get the 10 or the 3. If you get the one that is the size 30, it's going to be even teenier and tinier and more difficult to get used to. But thread does come in some really lovely colors and you can have a lot of fun um, personalizing this project as well. So let me set those aside for a minute and pull up our written pattern here. You can see I've got some dot grid paper ready to go so we can talk about this pattern. This pattern uses filet crochet and we can see there's some information on that right here and it'll be a little bit easier to see if we can get See if I can get both of these in one screen here. I'm just gonna fold this second page a little bit so we can look at it as we talk about it. Now, as you can see, this is sort of like a pixel graph. If you've done corner to corner crochet, it's sort of like cross stitching, but we've got basically these little pixels and each of these represent a block of crochet. So let's look over here where it says how to read a pattern. Each solid square is equal to a block of double crochet in the next double crochet, double crochet in the next two stitches or two, chain two space, and double crochet in the next double crochet. So if you can read charts, each one of those little blocks is either double crochet, chain two, double crochet, or four double crochets. So you're going to be working in either a stitch or you might be working into a chain. Just depends on what's in the previous row. Um, if it's an empty box, like we see right here, it's the chain two, skip two. If it's got the dot in it, it's a solid box, one that we crochet all the way across. Here, now that seems really, you know, okay, pretty straightforward. We see, you know, a dot, with, a box with a dot in it. It means four double crochets. We see one without a dot in it. It means double crochet, chain two, double crochet, right? Not quite. There's one more twist. And this is why I have this graph paper here, because I think this is going to help explain it a little bit better. Let me grab my pen. Okay. So when we work a row of filet crochet, I'm going to go from right to left because I'm right-handed here. We start with our double crochet stitch right there. And, you know, let's say we've made a couple rows of solid fabric. Now we're time ready to start making our design. We're always going to have a row or two of solid double crochets before we start putting the fillet design in there. Our first block will probably be a solid block. So that would be four double crochets, right? Okay. Let's say the next block is an empty block. We want to have that hole there to create that design. Rather than starting over, 
with another one, then chain two, skip two, that last double crochet of the previous block becomes the first double crochet of the next block. So your first block, we've got four double crochets. Well, for your second block, you start with this one, go straight to the chain two, skip two, and double crochet in the stitch after that. Let's say the next block is solid again. This stitch right here, this double crochet, which was the final stitch of this block, becomes the first stitch of the next block. So we don't add four more, we just add three more. So if you think of something as being three blocks across, it's not going to be 12 stitches. It's really sort of three stitches per block plus one on the end. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Let me try and do that again. Let's say we're going to the next row. Let's say this next row does start with, a, um, with an empty block. We'd of course be coming back across this way. So we'll start here with a double crochet in the first stitch chain two, skip the next two, and double crochet in the stitch after that. If this next block is supposed to be solid, then that is the first double crochet for the second block. Then we work into that chain, then we work into that chain, and then we have the final double crochet for that block. Then we'll say this one's supposed, to, this last block is supposed to be solid again. We've already got our first double crochet there, so then we just do the two sort of in the middle there and then one at the end to finish it off. So do we have any questions on how sort of the filet crochet charting works? Hopefully as we work through the first couple rows, it will make a little bit more sense. But if we look at it right here, if we look at our chart for now, I want you to ignore these little shorter rows down here, right here at this labeled row one is where we actually begin working on this chart. So our first row is all solid. It's all just a solid row of double crochets. But then our second row here, we would work in those first four stitches, then we would chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next stitch and the next three stitches, double crochet in the next three stitches, chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next three stitches, double crochet in the next three stitches, chain two, skip two, double crochet in the last four stitches. So hopefully as we work through these rows, that will make a little bit more sense. But just remember the way I tend to think of it as when I see these little blocks, let's look at it this way. Each of these are, let me get centered there. Each of these are one of those little pixel squares, right? And they're all filled in, we'll say. We've got a wall holding this block up right here. We've got to have a wall holding up right here, kind of supporting our row. We have to have those double crochets, and I know my hand's getting in the way, let me get out of the way there. We have to have those double crochets sort of holding up our row. But what happens in between is whether or not those blocks are filled in. So if it's a solid block, we fill in those two spaces with two more double crochets. If it's an empty block, we chain two and skip over two. And then we just follow that pattern across. So when you see the um, vertical bars in between the blocks, you can kind of think of those as the double crochets. And then whether or not there's a dot or not, as whether or not you fill in that block. So a couple different ways to think about that. And the reason that we need to know this for this pattern is that the written out instructions actually only go to, I've set my instructions aside here, I believe it is, Yes, through row two. After that, beginning with row three, we need to be able to read this graph in order to be able to follow along with the pattern. And the great thing is, of course, if you do not want to make this crochet bookmark for mom, but you'd like to personalize it for someone else, um, or for yourself, or even go ahead and just use bigger yarn and turn it into a wall banner, they have included the entire alphabet. So you'll need to possibly break out some graph paper and figure out exactly how you want to line those different letters up but you can totally customize this project um, with basically any name or any other word that you wanted to put on your bookmark. But luckily we've got some instructions to get us started. So starting at the bottom, we begin with a chain of 30. So let me go ahead and set these things all aside and I'll pull up my yarn here. Um, I did see one question come up about how to find the beginning 
of the crochet thread. So even though I'm going to be demonstrating with yarn for the actual pattern, let's go ahead and do that real quick here together. Um, sorry, it's so close. Those, those stitches are so tiny. I got my camera zoomed way in here. But basically, of course, we need to start by taking off the plastic. It keeps our thread all nice and contained. And then we're going to go ahead and slip off the paper here. When you're working um, with thread, it's more often than not, not always, but it's more often than not, there's, I don't know if you can see it in there, but there is a little cardboard cone in there. So we're not going to be able to pull from the outside. We need to pull, or not from the inside, excuse me, we need to pull from the outside. So what I usually start doing is I start looking at all these threads at either end, doesn't really matter which one, and I try and find sort of the one that looks like it's on there last. And it looks like to me like that's this one. Can I see how it looks like it's winding around and around and maybe it came around and that's about the last one? And I'll just start pulling on it, frankly. And uh, I figure it's usually going to be within a few pulls and there it was. I had to kind of just pull out on the ball until one end popped out and there it is. I've got maybe a good, you know, couple couple feet already pulled out on the thread, but if you end up having to pull out too much to do that, you can just wind it right back around that uh, the cone. There's it's not a cone. It's not cone shaped. I'm sure it has some official name, the cardboard cylinder, but you can just wrap it back around and then you're all set to start crocheting from that end. So I know that was super close up. Sorry, the stitches are so tiny. I wanted to make sure we had a good view and there that's where the camera was set. So now let's go ahead and talk about beginning. Here I've got some Red Heart Super Saver and an eye hook. Like I say, I'm just switching out so that these stitches are a little bigger so you can see what I'm actually doing. But we're going to begin with a chain of 30. But like I say, we want to start without that slip knot. So normally we'd make our slip knot and put it on our hook before we start crocheting. But this time we're going to stop at the first step of our slip knot. We just go ahead and fold that loop over. At this point, normally we'd pull that tail in behind and make our slip knot, but instead, we're just going to slip our hook right into that loop and sort of use our fingers to gently hold it there. You can use your non hook hand to sort of just hold that end. And then we're just going to go ahead and start crocheting. Now, for this very first stitch, you want to make sure not to pull real tight because we don't want to accidentally pull that closed into a knot. But now we can treat that just like any other chain. So I want to make sure my yarn's not doesn't have too much tension on it. And I'm going to hold on to that first chain we made just to make sure it doesn't get overly tight on me. But then I can just start crocheting as I normally would. When I come back to work into that chain, we can then tighten it up a little bit if we want to, but we just want to keep it loose for now. And then we'll avoid having that very first little knot in the first row of our project. And it will just help um, just help it lay a lot flatter and look a little bit more professional when it's all said and done. So we start with a chain of 30, which seems like a lot, but as you saw on the thread, wasn't that wide. Of course, on our, um, as I with our Red Heart Super Saver, it's gonna be a fair bit wider. Um, but like I say, I think you could use a yarn like this or even Bernat blanket, um, extra thick or something like that, and really turn this project into a whole name banner for your wall. So. If you're not up for making it in thread, you can absolutely have some fun with this in regular, you know, more standard sizes of yarn. So let's see how many chains I've managed to mat make here while I was chatting. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, two more, so close, 29 and 30. Okay. so. After you've got your 30 chains made, then we're ready to begin with row one. And row one is going to be our right side. And when you're making this bookmark, if you're making the word mom, this is a great choice because, you know, you think about an M, it sort of flips forward back and forth, um, as does an O. Um, they're reversible. However, if you are switching out to other letters, you may want to use a stitch marker to mark the right side of your bookmark, just to make sure that you don't end up shifting between rows and make sure you're always on um, the correct row as you go. So you don't get those fillets sort of off from where they're supposed to be and creating a jumble instead of a letter. So to begin row one, we're going to start by double crocheting in the fourth chain from the hook. And for this project, um, if you get through the whole thing, when you come back and add those 
two rows at the bottom, the ones that we, um, oh shoot, there's so many pages to this pattern. Let me grab it again here. The ones that we see right there, those two rows right there are added at the very end. We start, as I say, right here with the filet crochet row number one. So what I want you to do is work into the back hump for this first row. Rather than working under the top two loops of the chain, we're going to flip it over and work into that back hump. This is going to give us these two loops at the bottom of our foundation chain that we can come back and work into for those two rows of bottom trim. That's the section that's uh, how it's labeled on your pattern is bottom trim. And it's going to just be a little bit nicer finished project if you work this first row into the back hump underneath your chain over here. So to begin, we start by double crocheting in the fourth chain from the hook. So I've got my yarn over already on there. We're going to count one, two, three, four. And this means that those first three skipped chains are likely going to count as our first double crochet. After that, we double crochet in each chain across because it's row one and we want a nice solid row to work into. So the first row is just a row of double crochet, but we can talk about it as how it's written out nine blocks. Our first block will have one double crochet at the side. Then it's a solid block, so it's got two double crochets. Then we need another double crochet to finish it. Right, just like the little chart we looked at, four double crochets makes one block. Now let's start our next block of double crochet. This one right here, it was the last stitch of the first block. Now it's the first stitch of this block. So we're ready for the internal portion with a solid block. So we need two double crochets. We're not going to chain two and skip two. So there's one and two. And then we need the end for that block. I always have to have one there on the end. So we've made two blocks, but it's really seven stitches. One, two, three, four for the first block. But then let's count that one again. One, two, three, four for the second block. So we go to our third block. What was the last stitch of the second block becomes the first stitch of the third block. So there's our one and then two and then three and then four. Oops, there we are. So now to start our next block, we've got one and then two, three, and four. So like I say, this first row is all just really double crochet, a solid row of double crochet. So we don't have to think about it as its constituent blocks, but it gets us sort of working in that, that mental space. Now I need to pull up a little bit more yarn for my skein, but do we have any questions right away that I can answer before we continue on and actually get into some mesh here. At this point, I think I'll just double crochet on across this row. No questions right now. Okay, great. Like I say, I uh, apologize for not demonstrating in the thread, but I think you saw just how incredibly slow those stitches would be. And I'm just afraid we wouldn't get very far in the pattern and it would be quite difficult for all of us to uh, see what I'm doing. I like to sort of hold on to my stitches as I make them. I find that it helps a lot with my tension and gauge. And of course, if I were doing that with a thread, my hands would be completely in the way. So I do appreciate you bearing with me using larger yarn here today to demo with. But for this first row, it's simply a row of double crochet, which I, um, let's see, we can count them out. Sure, we've got our first stitch there, which is the first three we skipped, the two for the middle, there's that last one for that first block. So then our second block starts there. One, two, three, four. Third block will start with that one. One, two, three, four. That's the first block for that one. One, two, three, four. That's the first block for that one. One, two, three, four. First block for the next one. One, two, three, four. This hook I'm using, yes, um, it is a 5.5 .5 millimeter. It's what's recommended on the label for Red Heart Super Saver. So we've got just a few blocks left here. So this will be the first one for this block. So there's one and then two and three and four. Um, 
Someone I saw asked, after doing a chain row, do you usually work under the top two loops? I'd say that's probably the most standard way is to crochet under those top two loops. That's how you'll see a lot of, you know, instructions and illustrations and books have it. Personally, I almost always prefer crocheting to the back hump. I find it gives a better result, but it is optional. It's not, um, you know, generally required. Um, just, you know, I'd say try both, generally speaking, and uh, take a few stitches and see what you like. I find that when I go back to add an edging or more stitches, it just seems to work a lot better if I've worked into the back hump for this first row. So I think that was a whole block here. So let me, yep, that should have been a whole block. Looks like we've got just two blocks left. So this would be the first one of our second to last block, which would be, I guess, number eight. So then two, oops, two, three, and four and then we can tell we've got one block left because there's just three chains because that last one becomes our first one and then we can just finish off our ninth block here one oops two and three so if you have nine blocks you should have a total of 28 stitches so let's see here if i did that math right in my head remember we want to count that skipped three as our first one so we're one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight and the way i figured that out quicker in my head was i knew we had nine blocks and each block was going to be three stitches plus the one on the end. So nine times three plus one. That's how I came up with 28. So after that, then we're ready to go to row two. Um, but I know there were a couple questions that passed by while I was counting that I wasn't able to read at the same time. Just coming back to the window here. Um, if we use other letters, should we be sure that there are eight blocks used across the piece or would we have or nine blocks across the piece or will they have to graph it out um that's why i would recommend if you've got some graph paper or you know just this is like sort of a dot paper it doesn't have to be you know full blocks um it's helpful or you can just do it on some scratch paper um but yes you'll want to maintain nine blocks across here if we look you can see you want to have nine blocks across whether they're solid or empty you can see the O is a little bit narrower than the M. So there's two solid blocks on each side, whereas there's just one on the M. So you'll want to sort of come over here to your chart and count. We've got nine blocks across. So it looks like the M is must be seven blocks across. And you can kind of see, for instance, if you wanted to switch out an R, we'll pick an R because that's kind of a random one. One, two, three, four, that's five blocks across. So you'd want to have two on either side. So you could chart it out or you can just count the number of blocks and say, okay, how is that going to be centered? That said, um, especially if it's your first time, I'd go ahead and recommend, recommend breaking out some graph paper if you can, just to draw it out so you make sure you've got everything centered um, you know, before you get too far and end up having to pull too much back. So in fact, let's go ahead and pull up the instructions for row two are written out in sort of standard crochet instructions in the pattern. But let's go ahead and try and actually follow this chart instead, instead of our written instructions. And that way we can go back and check our written instructions and make sure that we did it the right way. Um, so we've Julia already has oh, a ahead. question here. Sure. Um, could you use a standing double crochet for the beginning stitch? You absolutely could. Um, you could use a chainless starting double crochet for um, you know, the subsequent rows instead of chaining three if you wanted to um, for your first double crochet. You could use a stacked double crochet. You could use really whatever double crochet substitute you want to use. Um, absolutely. So for our ease of reading here, I'm gonna go ahead and block off those two rows that are our bottom trim. And we can see right there is row one we've already made. So let's go ahead and cover that up. Makes it a little bit easier to read there. Okay, so row two, we've got our number on that side. That gives us our clue that we're gonna be starting reading across this way. You can always use those numbers to help you 
C, because of course we can turn our work, but we can't turn the chart. So we have to work from opposite directions. So for row two, we're going to start on this side and work our way across this side. So we start with a solid block. And go ahead and get my yarn back in my loop here. So for our first block, we're going to start with a chain three or again, your favorite uh, double crochet substitute. And our first block was a solid block. So we know that's four double crochets. We've got our first one is our chain three. And then we'll do two, three. Oops, I need to pull up a little bit more yarn here from my skein. Here we are. Red Heart Super Saver, unlike thread, is a center pull, but it is right on my table, so I'm not at quite the right angle to have it just flow out. Let's get this straightened back out here. Now I've pulled up a bunch of yarn. There we are. Okay, and four. Finally, we've got enough yarn here loose from our skein to make our fourth one. So that right there, four double crochets, that is oop, our first block right there in row two. Our next block is empty. So that means it's going to have the center two stitches of that block are going to be a chain two skip two. So we come back up here. We have to start with a double crochet, but it's the same double crochet that finished our last block. So now we go ahead and just chain two, one, two, skip two, skip over those two right there, one and two, and then double crochet in the next stitch to finish our block. So our first block was one, two, three, four solid stitches. Our second block was empty. So we recount that last stitch of our first block, one, chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next. So now we've got that open space. Then we come back to our pattern. We've got a solid block next, actually two solid blocks next. Let's go ahead and do those. This one, the ending of our empty block is the first stitch for our next solid block. So one, two, three, four. So there's one solid block. Now we need a second one. Got our first one there already made. Two, three. and four all right so now we go back down to our chart we did a solid block oops let me get that straightened out there a solid block an empty block and two solid blocks so now we've got another empty block remember we've already got our first double crochet there same stitch as the last one so now we just chain two skip two and double crochet in the next We come back down to our chart and if you want to if you're following these and you're having trouble following along these lines you can color them in with a marker as you go or cross them off we just did all the way across here to the very center so now we've got two more solid blocks right there so we've got the first stitch for our first solid block we'll finish that up with two and three and four and then we had a second solid block. So that one counts again for our first stitch. So two, three, and four. Then we go back to our chart. We just finished that second solid one right there. So now we've got an empty block followed by a solid block to finish off our row. So our empty block is Got our first double crochet right there, shared with the previous block. Chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next. Then we finish off with a solid block. Already got our first one there. So then two, and three. And then we need to work into that top of that chain three or whatever chain three substitute you used for that final fourth stitch. There we are. Get that one put in there. And there you have row two. We're kind of close here. I wanted, like I said, I want to be able to show that thread really well. So we're a little zoomed in, but we can go back and check what we did with the written instructions here for row two. 
it said to chain three. Let me get that centered there. Chain three, double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. Got that right there. Chain two, skip two. Got that. Double crochet in the next seven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we do that again. Chain two, skip two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that was the repeat right there. And then we chain two, skip two, and double crochet in the last four stitches. So you can follow that along and see, you know, row two, that's how it's written out word by word. But we can also then follow right along with those little pixels there, the little squares. After that, the instructions for our pattern say rows three through 24, continue to work in blocks and spaces following the chart. So that's where we need to make sure we have this second page of the pattern printed out or that we've charted out whatever word that is that we want to spell. We go to row three, we're going to be starting again from this side and working that way across again. So we can sort of move our paper up there to cover up row two if you like or however you like to do it. And then we can focus on row three. And remember, we want to start from the side, even though MOM is pretty reversible, just in case you're using a different letter, we want to make sure and start from the side with our number there. So we start again with a solid block. This time, let's go ahead and use that chainless starting double crochet. It's my, my personal favorite um, for a chain three substitute. So if anybody hasn't seen it before, I'll share it with you now. I'm going to go ahead and turn my work. Some people like to chain three and then turn or turn and then chain three. Um, for this one, you'll want to go ahead and turn first. And then we're going to pull that loop on our hook up to about the height of a double crochet, maybe just a hair taller. You can kind of just use your eyes to eyeball that compared to the double crochets we've been making. Then we secure the top of that loop with the forefinger of your hook hand. You can see I was holding my hook like this. I've switched to a knife hold to make that easier. So I can hold that loop secure there. Then I'm going to wrap that loop around my hook. Let me do that again. I've pulled the loop up to the height of a double crochet or a little bit taller. I secure it with my finger and I wrap it around my hook just as I would as if I were yarning over. Then I can insert my hook right in that first stitch. I've still got a hold of the top of it here with this finger right here. Then I yarn over, pull the loop up through the stitch, yarn over, pull through that loop and behind the loop wrapped around my hook. Yarn over, and then I'll finally release that loop and pull through two. And that is a chainless starting double crochet. And it's my personal favorite um, chain three substitute to use instead of a chain three to begin a row of double crochet. I'll definitely show that one again. And um, I do have a separate tutorial for that on my chip page. And of course, you'll be getting a recording of this class afterwards. So let me get my loop back in the hook here. We've been just do 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 crocheting along for row two, ready to begin row three. We turn our work. We start by pulling that loop up to the height of a double crochet, or maybe just a little bit taller. You can kind of eyeball it and play with it. Sometimes when I make it, I don't like it, and I pull it right back out and do it again. Um, it's okay, you know, if you have to make it a couple times, especially as you're learning it. We want to secure the top of that loop with our finger. You can see it's not not going anywhere now. It's not going to move around. Yarn over with the loop itself. Insert the hook right into that first stitch. Yarn over. Pull that loop up and through our stitch. Yarn over and pull through that loop and behind the loop that we wrapped around our hook. And then when we've got those just those last two loops. You can go ahead and release it. Yarn over and pull through those last two loops. So that gives you kind of that nice um, v that we're used to having at the top of the stitch and it's not quite as not quite as anemic you can see that original chain three down there that first skipped chain three this one just has a little bit more oomph to it and sort of blends in better with the other double crochets so especially for a project like this where you might not be working back into the edge um, this can be a really nice touch just to give you a little bit a little bit nicer edge to your crochet work but that just counts for our first double crochet after that we continue across just as we would um, and in the written pattern, that's the only thing we change is instead of chaining three for the first double crochet, that is a substitute for just that stitch. After that, we go back to our pattern. So remember that first, first thing in row three is a solid block. So then we've got to finish off our block here with two, 
And I'll show it again here as we begin the fourth row here. So there's two and three and four. So that's our first block. You can see how it kind of lines up with the block, you know, that it's worked right above. You can see we've got row three at first block should be worked into a solid block. We can always check our work. And then we're going to, we've got an empty block, so we chain two and skip two. And that's above another empty block. And that's where we're at. Always a good way to check your work. One, two, skip two. We're just going to skip right over those chains. Whether it's double crochets or chains, if you skip two, you skip those two. Then, of course, we need the fourth stitch to sort of finish off that block. Right there. And there we've got that empty space again. We come back to our chart. We had a solid block, an empty block, and now two solid blocks. So let's do that. We've got the first double crochet for the first one. So then two and three and four. So there is the first solid block. Pull up a little bit more yarn for my skein here. Oops. And then we've got a, was it a second solid block? Yes, a second solid block. So we've got the first one for that one. And then two and three and four. So you can see how row three is just kind of stacked right on top of row two. And we can see that as well. If we look at our little chart, row three is really the same as row two. So now it's time for another chain two, skip two. Right there, because remember this is the first stitch for that block that sort of begins and ends it. It's the walls that hold it up. So we chain two, skip those two, and double crochet in that one. And then we know that's followed by a solid block. So we've got one there, two, three, Four. And we can go back to our um, chart and check here. We've got one solid block, an empty block, two solid blocks, an empty block, one solid block. We've got one more of those to go here. Oops. This tiny little chart wants to stick to my fingers here. So we've got, there's our first one right there. Two, three, and four. Um, how I'm holding my yarn in my left hand is how I typically hold my yarn when I'm working with, um, well, most things. Um, thread, I tend to hold it just a little bit tighter. But for me personally, I tend to just loop my yarn over my forefinger of my left hand and then let it hang from there. If I need to add more tension, I can just sort of hold these two first fingers together more or uh, grab it with these other two fingers right there. But uh, how you tension your yarn in your left hand, I've discovered, is a very, very personal choice for sure. Um, no wrong or right way to do it as long as it's comfortable for you. So as I say, we know that our row three, we can see from our chart, is exactly the same as row two. So we've come to another chain two, skip two, we do it again. Chain two, skip two. Then of course, we need to finish that off. We need the wall on this side to hold up that block. And then if we come back to our chart, we're down to our final block right there, a solid block. And on this chart, they will always have a solid block on the sides. So you know when you come to those last three stitches, we're just going to go ahead and crochet in those last three stitches. So one and two and three. So let's go ahead and start row four so I can demonstrate that chainless starting double crochet again. You can see right there, we just made our row three. It looks just like row two. We're starting to build up our M. We've got sort of one leg of the M. There's the middle, the middle, and then the other leg. Again, we're a little close here on this camera, but I want to make sure we can see the stitches. So after row three, we just come on up to row four. So let's go ahead and get as far as we can through row four together. Row four has the number here on the left. So that's the direction we want to start and work across. As again, as always, we're going to have a solid row first. So normally that would be chain three and then double crochet in the next three stitches. But let's go ahead and demonstrate that chainless starting double crochet one more time. I'll pull up a little bit more yarn from my skein here. 
so I don't have to fight it. So to do, begin the chainless starting double crochet, let me pull these um, papers out of the way too, so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to start by turning my work so it's heading the right direction. Pull up my loop to just a little bit taller than a double crochet stitch. Secure the top of that loop with the forefinger of my hook hand. So if you're left handed, um, I do have a left handed video tutorial for this on my channel, but I am not left handed. <laughs> it's all technology. So we hold on to the top of that loop, wrap the loop itself right around our hook as if we were yarning over. So you see, I just move the hook right under there as if I was trying to yarn over with that whole loop. It's essentially what we're doing. Then we go right into that very first stitch of the row. We want to go under both, the, both those loops, just like we do for any other stitch. Yarn over. Pull that loop up through the stitch. I've still got a hold of the top of that loop so it's not twisting around on me. Yarn over again. Pull through that loop. And behind the loop, we round around our stitch. Kind of our yarn over and pull through two. And then finally yarn over and pull through those last two. And that is our chainless starting double crochet. And then we can continue with our first block, which is, of course is a solid block. So there's our one, two, three, and four. I've got a little bit of a fuzzy spot in the yarn here. This one's been my demo yarn. It's been rolling around a little bit. There we are. Now we need to come back to our chart. I remember the first one was solid, but is the second one solid? Let's find row four. There it is. Row four. We've got our first solid block. Next one's empty. Is it the same as row three? It's a little different than row three. Right there in the middle. So we're going to need to pay a lot of attention. We've got one solid block. Then we need an empty block. So this one will line up. Chain two. Skip two. Double crochet in the next. Always add that last wall. Hold up our block. And then after our empty block, we've got a solid block. First row, stitch of this block is right there. So two. They just share a wall. That's how I like to think of it. Sort of little, like little windows or doors all right next to each other. Are they open or are they closed? Could be either one. Got to check the chart, but we need the walls on either side to hold them up. So we've done a solid block, an empty block, a solid block. Now we do another empty block. We've got our first wall there to hold it up. So we chain two, skip two, oops, like a center to begin there, and then double crochet in the next to hold up the other side. And then we've got a solid one. We can go ahead, in fact, and just read it right across. We've got solid, empty, solid, empty, solid, empty, alternating all the way across for row four, ending in a solid block. So we've got a solid one, an empty one, a solid one, an empty one. Time for a solid one. We share that first wall there. Now we're going to be working into the chains. And for this sort of pattern, if you're making it in the thread, that might be a bit of a struggle. If you need to just go ahead and work into the chain space, that's totally fine. However, if you are working with yarn, or if you've just got really good eyesight and great lighting, you can go ahead and work into those individual chains. It is going to keep your stitches in place and give you a slightly nicer finished result. Um, but I want to go ahead and give you permission to enjoy your project. So if getting into those little chains and thread is just too much, then you can work into that chain space as well. You would just put two double crochets in that chain space. But if you can, you want to put each double crochet in those chains when you have a solid block on top of an empty block. Of course, we still need our last wall here to hold up our block to make it four. And then because it's row four, we just made a solid block. We know it's time for an empty block again. We've got the first wall there, our shared wall. Chain two. Skip two. Put up the second wall to hold up the other side. Just made an empty block, so it's time for a solid block. We've got this side to hold it up. Now it's time to fill it in or shut that window or door, however you like to think about it. Fill in the center of that square. And then, whoops, we have the second wall to hold up the other side. We just made a solid block, so we know from reading it, next is an empty block. So we chain two, 
and skip to whatever they are. They happen to be chains, so we skip right over them, put up the second wall here, and then that brings us right to the end of this row. And as always, we want to end with a solid block. So we just double crochet in those last three stitches. One and two and three. And now we have an opportunity to work into the top of one of those chainless starting double crochets. You can see sort of that loop we were holding down with our finger helps create that very last V right at the top there. So I think it's a little bit easier to work into than a chain three, but you still want to take your time to get under those top two loops and finish off that final double crochet right there. So you can see it lines up a little different in the middle. We're starting to create that M shape, but we're just following the blocks across. The big thing is just remember, you need to have sort of those walls on either side, and that's illustrated pretty well right here, sort of a beginning wall and an ending wall. It might be open in the middle, it might be closed, but you need to um, have the beginning and the end. And then when you've got a bunch next to each other, they can share that little wall in between. So um, I know we've only got eight minutes left, so I just want to make sure are there any other questions I can answer on how to follow this fillet crochet charting? I don't see any right now. Okay, fantastic. Um, definitely get those questions in. Like I say, we've only got about seven minutes left on this class. So if you have any other questions on those, um, absolutely let us know. Um, the rest of the pattern, let me pull up our written pattern here is essentially um, working across in those rows. And then the last few rows here, you just decrease to create, you wanna sort of slip stitch in to create these shorter rows right here. You can see they're all just solid double crochets across. Um, if you need to count your, check your stitch count, remember each one of those blocks, while it's made of four stitches, if you want to know how many stitches are gonna be in that row, You'll multiply the number of blocks times three and then add one. Um, I did not get a complete one done. Um, as I said, I started working on the one in actual thread and it took me about an hour to do the first two rows. Um, maybe not that long, but it took quite a while. So um, again, that's one of the reasons I chose not to demonstrate in thread today. Um, but yes, so you can count. So those right here, row 28 would have um, three blocks so that row should have uh three times three which would be nine plus one so there should be 10 stitches there in that final row so just a little bit of math to help you sort of check your work against the chart you're making since we've got just another minute or so here let me go ahead and show you how i would for instance add a different um so there's so many pieces of paper for this one a different um letter if i wanted to make sure, you know put a different letter in there if i wanted to spell out um you know whatever it would might be um we'll go ahead and i would just start out with blocking out probably one two three four five six seven eight nine blocks across and then we know we'll go to a different letter let's go with q whoops let's get it down here on the screen so much to try and get on screen here there it is the q that one is one, two, three, four, also five blocks across. We've got nine blocks here, so I know I'm going to have a solid block and a solid block on either side. But then I can go back to my queue and look at that first row. We've got an empty and then a solid, two empties, then a solid. So an empty, whoops, let me get that one back on screen, an empty then a solid, two empties, and then a solid. So you can, you know, really color those in if you need to, to help you see it a little bit better if the dots don't quite work. But you can definitely go back and forth, go look for that second row of the queue. Looks like it's a solid, empty, solid, solid, empty. We know the first two are our edging. So solid, empty, solid, solid, empty. And then we need those final two sort of colored in. So whether you want to use dots or graph paper, you can sort of create your own chart with those blocks and substitute in those letters. Um, let's see. So uh, is there any other questions? I saw we've got a couple more uh, comments here. Any other questions I can answer in these last couple minutes?
Let me see. Trying to pull back making, up the thread, but it's getting caught on everything. <laughs> just making sure that there's no other questions okay. right now. Great. Okay. So here we are again. Like I say, this is another look. So you can see kind of the the scale. This is the scale of the thread. Um, obviously, much much smaller than our great big um, worsted or medium weight yarn here. Our four weight yarn. Uh, this one, as I say, would actually make a really great name banner if you want to do something fun like that. You could have a lot of fun with this project. But otherwise, this is the uh, Aunt Lydia's crochet thread in classic ten. Um, this is actually the aqua pattern. My printer printed it out the blue a little bit differently, but um, this is what it looks like. And this is, I would say, on screen pretty close to what it looks like in person as well. But you just want to really, as I say, when you work with a thread, go ahead and take your time. You can see just how small the hook for that is. And I believe they've put some links in the chat. Um, you can get small packs of these hooks um, at your local Michaels generally. You want to look for steel or thread crochet hooks. Um, you can see it has a little bit smaller handle. Overall, it's just a smaller hook. Um, so if you want to, some you can pick up like uh, the little ergonomic things that you can add to your hooks, a little sleeve. There's different ones that different people make. You can add to it, a little sleeve to it. Um, but otherwise, just make sure to take your time and give your eyes and your hands a rest once in a while because these are teeny tiny stitches for sure. You just want to take your time otherwise and crochet right along as you normally would. Um, but it is a lot of fun. So fillet crochet can obviously be done in any weight of yarn. Absolutely. And you could definitely adapt this pattern to make it say whatever you like. So just remember each one of those blocks in a fillet crochet pattern represents four stitches but those little walls are shared just like you know just like in your house you're not building a new wall for each room there's one wall in between each of those little rooms it's just a matter of whether or not you're filling it in all right so was there any any last question i might have missed i don't think so okay excellent we can go ahead and come back to the other camera then. Um, just to let you know, I saw somebody just mentioned that they came in just a little bit late. Um, this was a free class, so it will be going up on the Michaels YouTube channel, usually within 48 hours. Um, so you'll be able to go back and watch that at your leisure, um, slow it down, pause it, um, and really follow along with those directions at your own pace. So hopefully you'll be able to check that out. But otherwise, I just want to thank you so much for joining me. Um, and whether or not you're celebrating, I hope you have a happy Mother's Day and uh, that you just have a great rest of your week. So thank you so much. I've been Tamara from Rugli, and thank you so much to Michaels and your inspirations for having me today.